Hello everyone, welcome back to another session in Dentistry and more. Today we have a small topic in conservative dentistry that is wedges and wedging techniques. So wedges uh, we are very familiar with uh, while doing restoration. So wedges are devices that create rapid separation during tooth preparation and restorations and are placed in gingival embrasures. So we keep wedges in gingival embrasures. Fist, the tooth and this is the gum line. We keep our wedges here. Okay, so this is the position of wedge. So wedges are basically point five inches that is around one to two centimeter and it can be uh, a triangular in shape or round shape and also uh, a plastic one which is uh, light transmitting this triangular and round are wooden wedges and we have one more category that is plastic wedges so the wooden uh, wedges uh, they are very easy to trim and adjust so we can easily adjust and trim this wooden wedges okay and they are even cheaper also uh, their properties they absorb the moisture and swell ensuring uh, retention of the band so we are keeping a band here so while doing the class 2 preparation so this band will be properly in position because these wooden wedges absorb moisture that is the saliva and uh, it ensure the retention okay so whereas a plastic wedge uh, it is uh, plastically molded and bent to a shape of the call so this is a call area which is the interproximal space so this transparent plastic wedges can transmit light so it can be used in light activated restoration so these are the two basic uh, types of wedges that is wooden wedges and plastic wedges so next classification is triangular and round so triangular wedges are most uh, preferred uh, for cavities in deep gingival margins okay so so this triangular wedges having uh, two positions okay that is apex and base so apex of the wedge usually lies in the so it will be like this okay so the apex this is apex it lies in gingival portion of the contact area whereas the base uh, which is in contact with the our gingiva so this is a gingiva so it is in contact with the gingiva so this helps in stabilization and retraction of the gingiva so it is used in tooth preparation and deep gingival margins so whereas the uh, round wedge so it will be round shape okay so it is not so commonly used it is made from wooden toothpicks by trimming the apical portion and it has uniform shape it is most commonly used in class 2 preparation okay so the plastic wedges uh, the problem with the plastic wedges uh, the trimming part is difficult and adaptability is also difficult in some cases so the plastic wedges uh, we learn the light transmitting is there again we have uh, normal wedges and wave shaped wedges okay wave shaped wedges and the normal one so the normal uh, wedges they are similar to the wooden wedges in shape and use whereas the wave shaped wedges uh, the curve shape uh, helps in easy placement and proper seal of the buccal and lingual embrasures okay without impinging the gingiva so wave shaped wedges are available in uh, small medium and large 
sizes okay that is a wave shaped so if we have this two tooth here okay and this is a buccal embrasure and this is a lingual embrasure okay so this is a buccal embrasure this one and this is a lingual embrasure so it will be uh, easily get adapt to this buccal and lingual embrasure that is a wave shaped wedges uh, whereas a light transmitting wedges uh, they transmit 90 to 95 percentage of the incident light uh, it helps in uh, composite uh, resin restoration especially in that cervical part because if the uh, other type of wedges it may uh, hinder the process of uh, polymerization okay so always uh, we need to um, keep some points in mind while using the wedges the first one is length of the wedge should be in range of 1 to 1.2 centimeter it should not irritate tongue cheek and gingival tissue and these wedges should be inserted beneath the contact area in the gingival embrasure so this is a contact area so it should be kept here so usually inserted from lingual embrasure area as it is wider than buccal area sometimes when it irritates tongue it can be inserted from buccal areas also so always the lingual embrasure is wider commonly so it can be inserted from the lingual side sometimes it can be tried from the buccal side if the tongue has uh, some irritation with this wedges so wedge should be uh, firm and stable during the restorative procedure and should not be forcibly inserted in the contact area it might lead to uh, pain and swelling now let's learn about the uh, various wedging techniques so we have four methods the first one is single wedging then double wedging wedge wedging and the last one piggyback wedging so the first technique is single wedging where we use only one wedge okay so all other wedging techniques we use two wedges here only one wedge so we place the pointed end from the lingual embrasure commonly uh, because most of the time the lingual embrasure is wider than the buccal embrasure okay so if we have at times the buccal embrasure is bigger we can point from buccal to lingual okay and wedge the band tightly against the tooth so that is a single wedging technique what is the second one that is double wedging okay so here we use two wedges this is the first wedge this is the second wedge so one is inserted from the buccal embrasure and another from lingual embrasure this technique is uh, indicated in uh, these methods such as the spacing between adjacent teeth uh, where single wedge is not sufficient we have we need to uh, keep two wedges in order to get a tightened retainer so when this space is bigger uh, we need to use two edges okay so this proximal box if it is widened in bacolingual dimension we need to use two edges so one we keep from the buckle and one we keep from the lingual embrasure what is the third one is wedge wedging okay in this technique again two edges are used so the first wedge is inserted from the lingual embrasure while the another one is inserted between the wedge and matrix band at right angle okay this is just from opposite parallel to each other but here the second wedge is kept at right angle so it is kept between the wedge and the matrix band okay so it is uh, used in maxillary first premolar because of the presence of fluids in root near the gingival area so in that case we need to use a second wedge at right angle to the first wedge between the matrix band and to the wedge okay that is a wedge wedging the last one is piggyback wedging in this technique again two wedges are used so there is one larger wedge which is inserted as uh, normally while the smaller one that is a piggyback is inserted above the larger wedge so it is indicated in cases of shallow proximal box with 
gingival recession okay so this is commonly in gingival recession this is in special case of maxillary first premolar okay this is big embrasures in buccolingual dimension so this this technique this piggyback technique is uh, providing closer adaptation and contour of the matrix band so these are the four techniques we use uh, in keeping wedges the single wedging is only one wedge the rest all are two wedge techniques one is from buckle and lingual which is double wedging the right angle one is wedge wedging and the bigger and smaller one is piggyback wedging so that's all about wedge and wedging techniques okay so hope you understood this wedging techniques and its types so i'll come up with a new topic in conservative dentistry thank you